everyone, this is Pig for Life, and today's P4L review will be taking a look at three figures from a new third party company, Mass Toys. This is their CT001, CT001W, and CT002, that's Skiff, Bulk, and Gold, uh, respectively. And these are Cybertronium versions of Bumblebee, essentially, or I guess you can say Goldbug, and then um, I don't really know exactly what this is a version of, but. I have a little bit of backstory in that. In any case, this this uh, third party company, Mass Toys, they're really focusing on Cybertronium vehicles. Uh, so their whole whole I guess mo is going to be that they're going to take a look at the Cybertron vehicles that we got to see a little bit of, like Bumblebee and Wheeljack and some others. Um, and we're going to be looking at those alt modes as opposed to the Earthbound ones that we normally see in G1 and other series. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go into packaging review. We have three different packages. This was the TFCon exclusive that was at Toronto just a few weeks ago. And these are the regular releases. Uh, I'm going to show them all off, but I'm only going to show transformation for one figure because it's the same old. So, packaging review. Uh, here's Skiff. You can see Cybertech series, again, focusing on the Cybertronium alt modes. And he's obviously a bumblebee. Uh, real quick note, the artwork here is all done by our very own reviewer, um, Bobby Skullface, who does do art. If you've been to any of the cons that he's attended, he does sell his own art. So uh, they had him do this. And the reason why they did that is because I guess they're trying to focus on community here with their toys. So not only is the art, but the photography and the video instructions are all done by um, community members of the Transformers community. So you can see design is Casey Sark, uh, artwork by Bobby Skullface, photos by Kuma Style, and then graphics by Brian Sevilla. If I got that incorrect, I'm sorry about that. On the back you do see his alt mode, and you can see this is the alt mode that we saw in one of the episodes, it might have been the first episode actually, where you could see Bumblebee and Wheeljack and, and Soundwave as, <laughs> hiding as like a lamppost kind of thing. Uh, and there's Gold and then Volk here. So same thing on these other guys. Same deal as far as who did all the photos. And again, I, I really like the fact that these companies, third party companies, are um, giving attributions to all the hard work that other people do um, and bringing it to... to um, to fruition. Uh, apparently the graphic design was done by Botu Country on this one, but artwork was still by, by Bobby. And they don't have any instructions, um, paper instructions, they are all video instructions. So you can just kind of scan here or there's some QR codes on the inside. They all do come in a plastic tray like this. And again you have a YouTube link, a QR code, or a Yoku if you're Chinese. Just open each of these up. Ba -ba -ba, wasting some time while we get out of boxes. Bolt is their version of kind of gold bug. Um, you know, whenever you have a bumblebee, you kind of get a free gold bug version, right? And this is nicely painted. And then this is the Volt version. From what I understand, this is. Um, could be two things, and I'm not really clear. Apparently, there was like a um, a version of Bumblebee that was like white and was a bad guy, or of the original G1 mold. I'm not really clear on that. Um, but also, there was a a white version or silver version of Brazil, which was a limited limited release of the G1 toy, and that might also work if you're uh, really obscure collector of G1 molds. In any case, here we have all three of the bots in um, their Cybertronian alt modes. He does have a gold bug face for Skiff. You can see here. And all you do is pull this out of here and then you have one screw on the back of the head that uh, you just re remove the face plate, front of the face, and then screw this one on. We'll take a look at that later on the gold book here. So by and large, they all look really nice as far as alt mode review goes. Um, they're really nicely done in the Cybertronian kind of flat, almost like, I always think of it as kind of like a Stingray look to Bumblebee. 
has some nice paint here, not a lot, uh, in, especially in this version of the mold or these two versions, um, but this guy is fully painted in gold and it's really cleanly done for the most part. I do have a little skiff, uh, scuff here, but I think that's just because uh, this is actually a review copy that they gave me. All these are review copies. I should have put that out as a disclaimer as well. Um, and the other parts are just kind of molded in kind of the brownish, tannish gold. And then here we have Volk, who I think I like the best. I mean, white just looks really nice in general. White and black, classic. They all do come with uh, guns that store in alt mode at the bottom here. Two handguns. But I really like the look of this mold. Kind of that... Again, stingray flatfish kind of thing. Nice molded details, and the plastic quality is actually quite nice. He's a, he's a, they're all small figures, but um, they feel like they're made of quality plastic. They all do have wheels. They can't fold up or anything like that, but you do have that. And really, that's the only articulation. Again, the only other feature being the storage weapon storage. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at, since since he's the main one, let's go ahead and look at Skiff. Transformation is very simple, um, but pretty satisfying. Again, if you want to look at the official video manual, they do have one on their page. Uh, first thing we'll do is go ahead and pull out, there's a couple tabs here, on each side. Go like that. And then I like to come in and pull on the legs. The legs are tabbed in right here. Bring these down, and the the legs actually have to rotate 180 degrees at the waist, and also 90 degrees at the thigh. Uh, they make a point to make sure that you know which side should be in uh, facing inward on the legs. This obviously has more of a, a gap here than this one, which has the bolted detail, so you get more um, articulation going into the thigh. So make sure that it looks like this, essentially. Okay. The next part is you come down here. Uh, let's go ahead and re pull out the guns. There's a tab here, and then this big beefy ball joint. You just kind of want to push that up. On the back, pull back on this piece. It's on a double hinge, and you kind of tuck it up, and then you pull down on this to release the tab here. You pull out the head. And then you have these thrusters in the back. You just push up on those. And they fill in the gap. And then finally you have kind of a double hinge on the back here. Make sure it's in like an L formation. I don't know if you can see that very well. Maybe. Yeah, and don't have it like laying down like this. You want to have it in a perpendicular formation. And have that tucked away like so. Uh, so for official transformation, you kind of want to get these ball, ball joints up. You bring the arm down and you rotate at the shoulders, like so, and then you rotate at the bicep, like that, and then you get the fist all situated, and then there's two configurations, I'll show one like this, I'll show the other, and the other configuration. Uh, this one, come around to the side and acts more like a shield. I guess or you can make it make it look more like a shield. Uh, so you can have one kind of tucked under the arm like this and this one's off to the side. I think I prefer the one off to the side. So it requires one bit of extra transformation. But nothing too complicated. So yeah, you want to keep these up and the shoulders down. I don't like this um, transformation on the shoulders. It makes his arms look super long. And they also are, the shoulder joint is really far out from the body. Like you would think that this part would be where the shoulder connects. So the way I do it is I actually rotate this around so that you see the ball joint and then use the hinge to tuck the arm a bit closer to the body. So you can see the difference, right? You can see that the shoulder here, you can actually see it on the front while this one goes straight through. I think that makes it look a lot more natural and then it also gives you the added benefit of having more of lateral outward movement without having to use this hinge which again makes his arm look really 
odd. So I would say go ahead and rotate it like this. The only downside to this transformation is that you see the ball joint if you look at it from the side here. Um, but otherwise, I think this looks far, far better than the official transformation. As far as the guns go, they're guns, so <laughs> you just make use of them as guns. You just put them in his hands. Um, no, no need for a, uh, what's it called, a tab or anything like that. It just goes in at probably 5mm standard if I, if I were to guess. And that's it. Transformation is pretty easy. Uh, let's let's uh, take a pause here real quick while I transform these other two so we can see all three of them at the same time. Alright, we're back with all these guys transformed into robot mode and you can see how they are slightly different. Uh, they do have the same faces here so I'm not even going to go bother transforming um, or showing you guys the uh, replacement steps. It really just is one screw in the back of the head here and you just replace it and you get this face or this face and they're quite nice the the mass version is definitely the better version so if we take a look at bumblebee's face or skiff's face um i think it's pretty bad actually so it kind of looks like bumblebee but he has almost like a monkey monkey mouth where it kind of protrudes the whole upper lip and lower lip protrude a lot giving him kind of a, a monkey apish kind of look um, it's not awful I guess but it doesn't really look like bumblebee to me then again this guy also doesn't look great so I'm uh, giving you an idea of scale a reference for scale they're almost exactly the same height which I do like in the sense that this guy can go into your masterpiece collection um, or wherever you have kind of the scale of bumblebee and kind of makes sense, right? Because they he would switch to here. So it works pretty well. The colors are obviously very different. This is more that orange uh, yellow from the official masterpiece. I do like the gold here. This guy definitely has the best and the most paint apps since he's mostly all painted in this metallic gold. He does have the, as I mentioned before, on the legs. This is the really the main gold part and the foot that are painted. Um, and this reminds me of, of the shine bug, kind of brownish gold, I don't know what you would call it. Um, but anyways, it's almost like a tan color with a little bit of yellow in it. So I actually like this color quite a bit, um, but it doesn't compare to the nice gold paint that he has. So it's a bit of a shame that they skimped out just on the lower legs when all of the upper body, um, you know, the back, the, the upper legs, it just looks a little odd, but I guess it is also some separation. So, who knows? As far as articulation goes, let's go into that. They say he has 28 points of articulation. I didn't go and count, but let's just take their word for it. He does have a hinged neck here and a swivel for the head. He does have these hinges on the shoulders and those big ball joints that connect the wing piece. Uh, we saw the ball joint in the shoulder here, so he gets a lot of outward movement, especially if you transformed it the way I did. He does have a bicep swivel. These shieldy arm things are on their own separate um, joint here. He does have a nice deep elbow bend. Um, not that I guess it's not that deep, but more than slightly more than 90 degrees. He has a ball jointed fist and then molded, oops, popped the gun out, and molded um, hands so there's no articulation in the hands themselves he does have that slight um, ball joint on the shield for extra options he has this nice ab crunch which looks kind of a natural if you do it too much it's really from the transformation of the figure that um, this exists but it's nice to have it a waist swivel universal kind of um, hip joints thigh swivel, 90 degree knee bend. Um, actually, you can get a little bit more with this lower leg hinge that's at kind of like the angle, uh, but it starts looking unnatural since it breaks up the look of the leg. So, really 90 degrees. He does have an ankle that's on a swivel here, and then it's on a kind of a ball joint-ish kind of thing, which gives you some tilt inwards and outwards, slightly outwards. So, nice design there. 
I think I covered all points of articulation. He does have a bit of a backpack and even his wings here. I wish they may had put a hinge here to maybe fold it down so it's not just, you know, swooshing out like a cape. But I guess you can make it look like a cape. But if they had a hinge here or something like that to make it fold down and a bit more compact, I think I would have preferred that. So I think that's it for articulation. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. The one thing I will say is that some of the tabs... Um, it probably could have used a couple more tabs and maybe one more pass in terms of tightening some of the joints Especially the sh shoulders here any of the ball joints uh, are a little bit looser than I would like You can fix it up with future But again, it would have been nice if they had gotten that a little bit tighter out of the out of the factory. I feel like this guy is the Maybe because he's the newest version. They maybe did do another pass. He feels the tightest in terms of tolerances and again, I do really like the black and white look that this guy sports. All right. So, with that said, uh, that's really it. The differences are really the color. This was an exclusive um, for TFCon. I don't know how much they were selling it in TFCon, but um, I'm sure you'll probably be able to get him online for a couple extra bucks more from some retailers that usually do have the convention exclusives after the cons. So let's go ahead and get the guy transformed back into Cybertronian alt mode and we'll finish off with final thoughts. So the first thing I like to do is get rid of the guns. Let's deal with the backpack and the head first. Just go ahead and tuck these down, push the head back on that hinge, bring this up. This will tab in there. And then this double hinge will tab in. Uh, will has a couple tabs here that's secured into place. Uh, next what we'll do is go ahead and bring this down and then there's two tabs here. So bring it down on these joints and then just tab it in like so. And just bring the arms out like this for now. You're going to essentially just kind of curve them up like this. And then depending on how you had the arm transformed again, get this piece back around and tabbed in here and here. We got one side done, same thing on the other side. So again, the key here is to have the ball joint not showing and you're gonna want to have the bicep swiveled, I mean the hand swiveled so that it can tuck in like this. There we go. All right. Since we're already here, let's go ahead and tab in the guns. You're going to put them in at a slight angle and they're going to go in these big ports and then kind of rest the, the tip of the gun near the hand. Really wherever you have room, but it needs to go kind of in that, that general vicinity. Lastly, with the lower body, just swivel at the waist. Make sure it's, it was down here like this, just raise it up like so. Uh, let's see if I remember to get this right. So what you need to do is get this tab in here. So you kind of have to go like this. And that will tab in. And then both feet will basically, um, the flats of both feet, the bottom of both feet will come together in the center. And that's it. Very simple, right? All right, so final thoughts on the Mass Toys um, releases for their Bumblebee mold. Um, I kind of like it, so it's pretty fun. I think it's a, a very easy figure to transform. It does have really good articulation for a figure this size. Uh, again, the only big issues I have with it are the kind of tolerances that um, I think they could have done a little bit more on and maybe a little bit more clean up on this big wing piece. But by and large, they're doing something that's a bit new. And I, I've been saying that a lot recently, and I think that's a good thing. So we've been seeing more and more figures coming out that are outside of the general, just normal G1 masterpiece scale. We're getting more IDW stuff from MMC. We're getting some stuff um, from these guys and the Cybertronium forms. Um, we're getting some stuff from Make Toys that are their own original line, as well as Galaxy Force or Cybertron. So I, I'm liking that the universe is expanding beyond G1. Even though I'm a big G1 fan, it's cool to see other other things. Um, I guess technically this is G1, but you know what I'm saying. And they're going to have a lot more free reign to do um, 
alt modes that weren't shown in the show since we didn't have a lot of that. Uh, so I'm really interested in seeing what else was what else will be coming out. It looks like from the back here that this might be um, it says stack. So it looks like maybe pipes. I'm not I'm not really sure. In any case, we're going to get a, a, a more figures from these guys in the future, so I'm really looking forward to it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, as always. If you like the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe. It really does help. Keeps me motivated. I'm trying to get to 4,000 um, this year, so hopefully before it takes, uh, hopefully it will be before October, because I hit 3,000 last year in October. Um, so that's really it for this review from figures from Mass Toys coming out of the TFCon. Uh, convention that I got. I will have some more reviews, a lot more reviews over the next um, week or so with more exclusives and previews and everything like that. Alright? Thanks a lot everyone. Have a good one.